Hello students, so we are here for the next topic of discussion that is terrorism. So in your syllabus, there is specifically mentioned what is the role of external state actors and non-state actors. This part has been clearly mentioned in your syllabus. But until and unless you learn about terrorism as a topic, it will be difficult for you to understand these topics. Henceforth, what I will be doing here, I will be teaching you the whole topic holistically. We will discuss terrorism and in this particular video, we will discuss basic roles of state actors and non-state actors and what does it actually means. So this particular series of test terrorism topic will be in parts and this is part one of the topic. What all we will be discussing in this particular video, let's discuss. First, I will discuss about terrorism, how it can be defined, though it, there is no consensus on the proper definition of the terrorism. Then what is the present position with respect to India, some of the data related to the terrorism topic that can be used in your mains examination, uh, whether it is introduction part or it is the body part, you will definitely be, uh, it will be easy for you to use these data. Then what are the types of terrorism and how, how these terrorist group, they spread the terrorism. So that means the topic is what are the means of terrorism? There is a difference between them. Do not get confused. Then we will further classify terrorism on the basis of external state actors. What role do they play and non-state actors? This particular question has already been asked in your previous year questions. So previously it has already been asked by UPSC. Henceforth, we will focus in this particular topic in detail and in addition this will be uh, this is also the part where specifically mentioned in your syllabus so please ensure that you cover this topic well then if we take over to the categorization of the terrorism i will tell you how can, how we can categorize them and then ultimately what about cross border terrorism this particular topic is equally important uh, there is one uh, topic in your syllabus border management so you can link this particular topic to the border management part of your syllabus of internal security too. And then ultimately in this particular video, we will discuss about the reasons for the spread of terrorism. So this will be the uh, whole coverage in this particular part. In subsequent lectures, we will discuss about other topics and definitely what is the role of the government, what is the role of security forces, agencies that is equally important for your UPSC exam. Let's start the topic. But before that, I want you to focus on some of the previous year questions. See students, there is a lot of importance of previous year questions because until and unless you look into those questions, it will be difficult for you to under, understand and analyze how much you need to prepare in this topic. So I will take you to few questions like a recent question of 2021 where multi-dimensional challenges posed by external state and non-state actors with respect to internal security, this particular question was asked to you to analyze it. So five, five points of both the topics, it will be enough with few examples. And then the next part of the question was discuss the measures required to be taken to combat these threats. So what all measures are required? So I will deal um, with respect to these topics in your subsequent lectures. Then in 2019, they specifically mention about unlawful activities prevention act of 1967 that recently uh, government is trying to strengthen and uh, to with respect to the anti terrorism laws and yes uh, there are two laws particularly uapa and nia national investigating agency so what happened in 2019 why this question was asked basically there were many amendments that were done in these two particular acts so it was uh, somewhere expected whether in 2019 or 20 this question would be there and they asked this question in 2019 and then uh, see this is particular statement they have given and then they ask you analyze the changes so that means with respect to current affairs you need to be vigilant enough and uh, you should have that understanding that what all is happening around you and then the question can be asked with respect to internal security so then the scope and reasoning for opposing uh, opposing this particular act so whatever amendments has been done there was a huge cry uh, that uh, human rights violations can happen and with re that respect also it has uh, synced that part and asked you separately so this was 2019 question 2017 it asked you regarding the terrorism being a grave challenge to national security a simple statement has been given 
generally upsc does so it gives you a statement and then it asks you uh, seeing the relevance of the statement with respect to current affairs mostly it asks you the question so this is a statement given by the upsc in the question within itself now the question is the the particular part of the question that you need to answer is what solutions do you suggest for this growing problem so if you see this particular part of the question and this particular part of the question discuss the measures it's actually the same it's actually the same whatever changes that have occurred from 2017 and 2021 within last four years you also incorporate all those measures but the question has been same then another part the second part of the question was all about the major sources of terrorist funding that means it's somewhere is uh, trying to ask you how the money is obtained by these the terrorist groups and uh, one topic uh, is actually there with respect to terrorism in your syllabus that is linkage of organized crime and terrorism so students terrorism is one aspect organized crime is another aspect and they are actually somewhere linked so this is the part of your syllabus this particular part and this is somewhere being indirectly asked in this question so uh, while uh, preparing this particular subject of internal security ensure that you cover all the aspects and all these topics are interrelated in the introduction video i have given you uh, such kind of uh, discussions of and the previous year questions as well so i hope you are trying to understand what all you need to learn and how you need to approach in the exam with respect to this particular subject next question is 2016 question uh, previous year question uh, this question was very unique see this question was very unique and students were some uh, somewhere puzzled how to answer this, this question it asked you that uh, there is emerging competitive industry this there is emerging competitive industry of terrorism and since last few decades it has been a very competitive industry how can terrorism be competitive definitely it is competitive because there are many groups there are many they, whenever there is a attack there is some kind of a group that comes up and takes the responsibility and this this suggests that there are many groups and they are fighting for their own ideology that means it is emerging as a competitive industry and then you need to analyze the statement for writing this particular answer you need some examples until and unless you have examples to quote in this answer it will be difficult for you to justify the answer to the question and henceforth i will be giving you uh, i will be giving you some uh, uh, associations some organizations and whatever attacks some some examples of attacks that they have done so this is the overall i have given you four discussed four particular questions and there is a need not to be panic that uh, you do not know the answers it's all right even if you don't know the answer i am giving you such a, a discussion of previous year questions in advance so that once we go through the journey of uh, explaining this topic and understanding this topic you should be uh, well aware that what kind of questions are being asked in upsc now since you are little bit aware of this topic let us start the topic from the very first theme how will you define terrorism so if anybody asks you is there a proper definition to terrorism the answer to the question is there is no proper definition worldwide worldwide there is no consensus on how to define terrorism this is a major problem and if anyone asks you why is it so so if it is being asked to you why so there are two reasons that i can give you first is for one country an act of terrorism can be seen as a part of freedom struggle by other groups by other groups or other country 
if one of the country says that this is an act of terrorism the other can say that no this is a part of freedom struggle we are fighting for our cause we are fighting for our ideology so how can there be a consensus between the two countries and second answer is that there are some countries there are some countries some countries that encourages that encourages criminal activities criminal activities on other groups or countries so because some of the countries they they have this have some encouragement in uh, doing some criminal activities on the other they will never agree to the definition of terrorism because if they do so they will be somewhere being uh, attacked as well and into the particular question of law that uh, they are also themselves doing some act of terrorism so this is the reason behind this but the students still if we want to define terrorism how can we do so i will explain you the definition of the terrorism if you want to write a definition how you how you can uh, see different terrorism being different from uh, nationalism or insurgency so you need to know what is terrorism first point there are few conditions i must say there are few conditions associated with the act of terrorism the first condition associated is the violence whatever act is there whatever criminal act is there whatever kind of a event is there if the event is violent this is one of the conditions that this it is a terrorist act second point is let us suppose this is the first point that or the first condition of a uh, uh, terrorism second condition is actually that this particular act of terrorism is well planned it cannot be at random it is well planned act and if a act of the violence is well planned it comes under the purview of terrorism third point is that there is some kind of ideology behind the act of the terrorism and such kind of ideology can be religious ideology or maybe political ideology or maybe other kind of reasons for being violent so such kind of ideology is the reason behind for propagation for example religiously if we can if we can uh, quote an example of islamist fundamentalist they want to uh, rule the uh, area or the region and unite the muslims together uh, to make the particular they are against the western countries and they want to bring sharia law again and islam being the only religion and only god is allah so that is what they feel that is what their ideology behind and then whatever act they do they do it in the name of religion this is one example or maybe taliban taliban wants to do uh, wants to gain political power so it it gained it is it has recently gained political power in afghanistan so their ideology is that religion is being linked with the gaining of the political power in the region and that is what they have done so so there are many reasons for violent activities and ultimately ultimately if there is a act of terrorism it will be over random people so random people will be target will be the target and that is why we'll say that this particular act of terrorism will be over random people random civilians and ultimately they want to instill fear in the minds of people so that people should be in a stage of fear and if they will be in fear then definitely their government will be easily to easy to surrender and the government will be weak enough so if the infrastructure if the political infrastructure of a country is weak then definitely their ideology in that case can propagate or promote and fear installing fear in the, in the minds of the people is one of the targets of the uh, these particular groups so what they do what they do after the act once the particular terrorist attack has been done what they do they take responsibility of the act 
so they want everyone to know that this is this is the particular organization responsible for such kind of an attack and that is why they want to create a, a, a message they want to send the message to the people and the government that yes they are brave enough to do such kind of an act this is how these five conditions or four five conditions can actually define terrorism and an act of terrorism being different from a other kind of violent acts i hope students a basic the structure of the terrorism definition is clear to you however there are few attempts in giving the definition of terrorism one such example is one such, such example is the united nations general assembly resolution of 49 by 60 1994 in 1994 un general assembly it stated that any kind of a criminal act that is intended to provoke the state in a state of terror in general public and group of the people or particular person does so and the political purpose is the reason behind so this is some kind of a definition that you can give in the exam and you can quote united nations general assembly resolution and this will definitely help you in writing good introduction of your answer it also states that these acts are unjustifiable you cannot justify violence actually you cannot you can never justify violence and whatever may be the conditions these considerations are generally political philosophical ideological sometimes racial ethnic or religious and these are the natures these considerations are being stated that because of all these reasons there is a act of terrorism or criminal act and definitely you cannot justify it in the name of races or ethnicity or religion you are aware of that this is one aspect in addition i will give you another definition this particular kind this particular definition uh, was given by arab convention for suppression of terrorism and it was adopted by the uh, council of the arab ministers and they uh, they had this meeting in cairo egypt in 1998 where they stated that any act any particular act which is a threat which is creating a act of violence and motivates its purpose so here they define terrorism as an act of threat of violence uh, whatever may be the motive or the purpose and they are doing so for propagating their agenda collective criminal criminal agenda and creating panic in the minds of the people causing fear and harming them and in fact they are taking away lives liberty of the people security is also un under the threat and damage to the environment so environment is also put into the question uh, in the definition public and private installations are being uh, put into danger and ultimately seeking uh, what what they want to seek they want to jeopardize the national resources jeopardize means uh, putting something in danger so this is the overall definition given by the arab convention for suppression of terrorism whether you can use this definition or this definition or whatever points that i have given you this will help you in understanding the topic in addition this will help you in writing good introduction in your answer so now definitely this question would be there in your mind what is the difference sir between terrorism insurgency and nexalism so we have already covered the topic of left wing extremism nexalism insurgency in northeast and terrorism i am teaching you here so my students are already aware what are these topics all about if you have not seen those videos then definitely i would suggest refer to those videos first and then come to this particular topic now in the act of terrorism if i differentiate it with insurgency or nexalism though i have already explained insurgency and nexalism beforehand the basic difference is that within these two particular kind of uh, insurgency and nexalism there is attack on government infrastructure government security forces however in terrorism the act is against the innocent civilians and this is very much random in nature the targets are very random however in case of insurgency and nexalism the targets are very much specific okay then it is also possible that in insurgency or nexalism there is local support local support to ideology it is possible like in case of insurgency if there is a demand of greater nagalim uh, nscn is an organization may, maybe many people they support as well 
they are local people they support the ideology as well uh, for example with respect to nationalism there is a reason behind of communism so spread of uh, communism is the reason that next slide people are attacking and they want to make a people's republic of india as i've already told you if they achieve their targets but here in terrorism uh, there is no support public never supports terrorism terrorism is never accepted anywhere however for some money however for some benefits there can be some support uh, like overground workers topic i have explained you but still still there is no local support for the ideology as such okay students ultimately if we have to say that whether insurgency and nationalism can be an act of terrorism in future yes they can be if if such kind of attacks are done on innocent people and creating the fear in the minds of people these acts can also be they can turn out to be the acts of terrorism and in addition we can say that these are sub topics sub headings of terrorism attack so if we make a venn diagram if this is the act of terrorism circle within the circle there can be there can be act of nationalism or insurgency and there can be some overlapping as well but all the acts of terrorism are not nexalite or insurgent attack okay so terrorism as a broader topic nexalism and insurgency are narrow down topic okay students particularly in nexalism and uh, insurgency guerrilla warfare they are very much equipped or aware and trained with respect to guerrilla warfare okay so students i hope there is a uh, the, the difference has been clear in addition if we say uh, the reasoning behind is that the, the insurgency or nationalism is kind of some kind of a rebellion also insurgency means rebellion however terrorism we can say that yes a particular ideology is behind for spread of the terrorism mostly political or religious anyway okay so these are the basic differences now we need to come to the point of what is the present position in india and data related to terrorism you can quote such kind of things in your exam so take you to the background uh, initially in the tada act of 1987 we first attempted to define terrorism because in our ipc of indian penal code of 1860 there is no offense as such where terrorism can be defined so tada is a terrorist and disruptive activities prevention act of 1985 however in 1995 this act was repealed okay so many actors they were uh, uh, you know they are, they were charged with tada so this kind of act the charges were there uh, but it is being said that only in fact less than less than 2% of people they later on get convict under the tada act so this shows the misuse of the act and henceforth it was repealed but later on in 2002 there was another act called as prevention of terrorist act prevention of terrorist act and it was also repealed in 2004 it was repealed in 2004 again the reasoning was that there were many misuse of the act so even though we tried to define terrorism under the acts they are repealed but then in 1967 under the unlawful activities prevention act uh, we have put some acts which are unlawful though we have not defined terrorism as such but when in 2019 there was a uh, uh, the, the, the amendments that were done in the uap act the definition of terrorist act has been introduced definition of terrorist act has been introduced okay students so this is one point and that is why we are saying the present position so this is the present position where terrorist act is somewhere being mentioned in the uapa amendments now uh, giving you the crux of the amendments though we will be discussing this in the future uh, parts as well but uh, i'll i'll clean the slate first now 
uh, I'll take you to the background first that there was a person called as Masood Azhar. Masood Azhar. This particular person is a chief of Jaishe Muhammad group. Okay. In 1999, this person, for releasing this particular person, there was a flight hijack of Air India. Okay, that is passed. Later on, it formed, uh, he formed a Jaisi Mohammed group and many attacks, for many attacks, he, this person is responsible. So, what India was trying to do, that India wanted this particular person to be a global terrorist. At international forum, India tried it, its best to ensure that this particular person has been declared a global terrorist. But uh, there were few countries, they were particularly China, which was against the move. It is being said out of the 15 member uh, committee, China was one of the person, uh, one of the uh, committee member that uh, was against this action. But some of the points that came up uh, at that point of time was that India in itself doesn't designate a person being a terrorist. Under the UAPA Act, what we can do, we can declare a organization being terrorist. We can declare an organization and we can ban this particular organization. Okay, but we cannot, we cannot uh, put a label of terrorist on an individual because of which what happened is used to that this, if, if we ban particular organization, then the member, they will form another uh, group and they will form another association. So this particular point was a, 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 a crux actually at that point of time, a, a point of uh, mention that how India is trying to designate Masood Azhar as global terrorist even if even when India in itself doesn't never uh, in, uh, quote the particular person being a terrorist that is why in 2019 amendments it was especially added in the act the amendments were done that now it um, the act empowers the government to designate individual being a terrorist and this is a very very key point that you must know that today now we can designate an individual also a terrorist and henceforth henceforth uh, the problem here is that many of the activists after this particular amendment they came forward and they said that uh, if an individual is being designated as a terrorist by the government the government can misuse the act and definitely it could tarnish the image of a person because once a person is designated as a terrorist it is uh, if 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 not guilty then the if the image is being uh, tarnished then that is the human right violation ultimately and that is why this particular question was asked in the exam because at that point of time in 2019 and 20 there was a much uh, uh, many uh, activists were there which were against this particular act the amendment okay there are other uh, amendments uh, points as well but we will discuss it later on that uh, who can take over the investigation and what about the confiscation of the uh, property of the person who is being designated as a terrorist all these points have also been added but we will discuss it later but currently the present position says that under the global terrorism index global terrorism index of 2022 which is given by institute i hope you know this institute of economic and peace the ranking of india is india's rank is 12th okay first point you must know this but since last two to three decades india has always been under top 10 countries of the world which are impacted by the terrorist action even in 2020 we were at rank 8 then then rank 10 and now we are at rank 12 so mostly we have been under top 10 uh, top 10 numbers where we are impacted by terrorism so you can look at this particular photograph here the data has been given with respect to 2011 and india is ranked 4 2011 means two decades ago we were ranked 4 and 
we can see in this particular photograph that India and this particular region of uh, Asia, it is highly impacted because of terrorism. So, you can see students that India has always been in a vulnerable position when it comes with respect to terrorism. And in 2019 records, they say that lowest fatalities have been seen, but uh, even if a single individual is impacted or loses his life or her life, then the country needs to be vigilant in that aspect as well. If we talk about the peak period, definitely early 2000s were the peak period. 2001, we say because uh, there was a parliament attack on uh, December 13th, 2001. And uh, attack on a parliament was a very big deal. Uh, and uh, definitely it's one of the points where even if the, if, if the parliament is not safe, then how can the si basic civilian, a, a simple person can say that uh, he or she is safe. So this was a peak where many fat, uh, fatalities were seen. And this is an example of uh, uh, Taj attack. If you know, this attack was in 2008. And we call it as 26-11 attack. And uh, though our uh, brave security forces fought very well against the uh, terrorist, uh, terrorist uh, particularly who were uh, hiding in the Taj uh, particular hotel, uh, but still, uh, we say that uh, there was a lack of intelligence actually, so that we were not successful. Uh, somewhere we were not successful in preventing this attack, right? But this is the current scenario and this is these are two examples that I have given you of the terrorist attack. The geographical spread of the terrorism is throughout India. We cannot say that it is only localized to north or south or east part of the country. It is throughout the country. And in 2018, if I give you the data, 84 districts were reported under the threat of terrorism. 2019, the number has come down to 75. And 33 districts, they recorded fatalities in 2020, though many of the uh, most of the part of, of three to four months were highly under total lockdown in 2020. Still, there were some districts that were impacted. Looking at the Jammu and Kashmir situation also, there has been downward trend, though there is a downward trend year wise, but even if, if, a, if a terrorist attack occurs now, then what we will talk about all this data. Uh, if a terrorist attack happens, two or three attacks happens today, then again our country will be in uh, shock and a wave of uh, terror would, uh, fear would uh, roll uh, among the masses and this will be a problem. So the problem still persists, it prevails. Even if a single fatality is there, it is a problem. Though we can see, though we can see there is a downward trend with respect to the red line, the civilian skilled, and with respect to the blue line also, there is a downward trend where the security forces are being shown. This is the data from 2006 to 2021, and Ministry of Home Affairs data is there. You can definitely uh, plot this particular graph in your exam to show if a question is being come that uh, if a question comes that there is a downward trend then definitely you can quote this particular this data in your exam but the problem is still persist and the act of terrorism is not just in india but is a, it is a global problem and all the countries they need to come together and a consensus should be there to tackle such problem right now come to the next topic of what are the types of terrorism Okay, what are the types of terrorism, though I have mentioned these points, but still I want to categorize, I want to categorize them into three headings, three major headings. Okay, first one is the psychological. So, some of the terrorism uh, or the acts of terrorism, they can be because of the psychological reasons. For example, if we take example of Hitler. Hitler was in total hate. He used to hate Jewish people and masses. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, many people, they the innocent people, in fact, innocent, I would say, they were killed. And only the problem behind was hatred towards the Jewish by the Hitler. So this is some kind of a psychological issue only that the person Hitler 
was so much in psychological problem that he was having in the hatred amongst the Jewish and because of which such acts of innocent that were killed and it is in itself is an act of terrorism if we call it. Second is basically ideological. I have already defined what types of ideology can be there. It can be religious. It can be political or if we interlink them with ethnic, racial, all such kind of ideologies if, and if a group, a terrorist group or a country tries to promote and propagate such kind of ideology, they can be indulged in some kind of acts of terrorism. Because if there is a violent attack and innocents are being targeted, it is an act of terrorism. Example, you can take examples of Taliban they want to promote not their religion not not only their religion but also they want to gain political power in afghanistan they have done so example of isis so islamic state of iraq and syria uh, this particular organization the aim of the organization is to gain uh, to be khalifa so caliphate this is the main objective and throughout the world khalifa should be again uh, they should they should uh, the people throughout the, the muslim community throughout the world should uh, uh, bow uh, under the khalifa and the religious political or military rule comes up under the main head so this is the basic aim of uh, isis and to propagate throughout the world so this is again ideology and third example can be strategic actually strategic so this is first point this is second point and the third category is strategic uh, within the strategy within the strategy we can say that uh, if some kind of uh, organization plays a strategic role and spread violence for for their own uh, uh, purpose this is basically strategic in nature uh, one such example is extremism though this example can also come under the heading of the ideology of communism spreading communism but extremism also is one of a kind of a, a problem where the violent act are being done against the government so so as to gain the particular advantage and uh, el eliminating the particular uh, people from there and also uh, taking uh, care of the resources taking care of the resources then if we take another example the another example can be African National Congress. See students, African National Congress, uh, we can say that uh, it, though it was a part of the uh, um, eliminating the apartheid problem in the Africa, though it was uh, very much, it played a very important role in eliminating the apartheid problem. Later on, violent acts, uh, they were there within the group uh, because of which it was declared in fact it was banned also in the regions and this is somewhere gaining the strategic uh, power within the country so this can be one of the example so these are the three basic criteria under which the heads of types of terrorism can be explained however however i have bifurcated them into five points students this would be better way and explanatory way to uh, bifurcate these particular uh, uh, types and one can be first can be ethno nationalist terrorism so if we talk about ethno nationalist terrorism there are some kind of ethnic groups which are trying to separate themselves and make their own identity and it, it can be at sub national level right so this is first point at the level of religion so i've already explained you religion but what exactly happens is if a person is so much polarized if a person is so much radicalized then in the realm of the religion a person is uh, going and doing suicide bombings or suicide attacks are there so he or she may be told that after your death because of the spiritual reasons or external awards uh, it could be said that after your death uh, supreme power god will give you uh, some kind of uh, uh, relief there, there can be some kind of reward or maybe in your future 
life you will be rewarded so this way a person can be polarized religious symbols and myths and rituals can be practiced and because of which a person can be polarized or maybe some moral justification so people who are doing the terrorist act in the name of religion they say it is not done by us it is uh, the god supreme power who is helping us in uh, spreading such kind of a uh, um, message throughout the world and this is what for we are doing and what this is the religion being the reason then there can be framing the conflict if there are two religions that are in conflict then one of the religion can do act of terrorism and spreading the religion so this is the religious terrorism then another word is narco terrorism so actually there are two words here the narco word is for drugs drug trafficking and terrorism means if there is a linkage of organized crime and organized crime of drug trafficking with terrorism for example that you want to that there is a group there is a group that wants to spread its region or a, a, a place so that drugs can be propagated in that area but for doing so they do a violent activity and violent act has been done to uh, propagate their boundary and promote more drug trafficking this can be narco terrorism then there can be state sponsored terrorism so there can be many uh, countries that that can do uh, terrorism whether within their own country for gaining political power or maybe in the another country external state this is i this i will explain you in detail and another aspect can be ideological i've already told you so there are left wing there is right wing i've already explained you left and right in your, in the previous videos so the example of left wing extremism is nexalism where the idea behind is to topple the government and uh, we can we have already explained you red corridor that how it is uh, prevalent in india as a in a form of a, a corridor of uh, particularly we'll see the eastern part of the country is mostly impacted so that is called as red corridor you know this already and there are some examples of right wing terrorism as well right wing is uh, some a group who wants to maintain status quo that means whatever power they have they do not want to give up that power and to maintain that power they do some kind of a violent attack and malaga attack is being said as one of the right wing extremism attack and there are other examples also so these are the types of terrorism and you can explain these types and this can be specifically asked in the exam coming to the next topic that is the means of spread of terrorism how this particular terrorism will be spreading so students one such example is the conventional way conventional way of uh, taking arms uh, taking guns in their hands and then propagating it so this is the conventional means and there is army there the hijacking is also a conventional way of uh, spreading terrorism there are other new forms of terrorism that have come up for example there is environmental means and for that i will give you an example this is example of saddam hussein Saddam Hussein was a leader of Iraq and to control Kuwait what he did he uh, fired the oil wells and because of which there was lot of smoke over Kuwait and to gain that political advantage over kuwait he did that act and this is in itself an act of terrorism because now innocent people of kuwait will be impacted by this they are also taking responsibility of it and this is some kind of a violence actually because health of the people will be impacted next example is weapons of mass destruction see there can be nuclear uh, bombs nuclear power uh, if a country is having a nuclear bombs if a country is having nuclear weapons then this is a weapon of mass destruction so nuclear bombs can be classified into two forms one is the fission reaction one is where the fusion reaction occurs this is science and technology topic actually uh, uranium is used in the fission reaction and lot of energy is being produced because of the uranium and it is also radioactive in nature 
and radioactive substance is being used which uh, harms uh, the peop harms uh, people actually directly and indirectly and even their progeny as well because it impacts the genetic material of the uh, the person as well in the fusion reaction when we could talk about fusion reaction it's a basically hydrogen bomb so i will explain it in the science and technology lecture i uh, in detail but uh, this particular example is a weapon of mass destruction this is another means of spreading terrorism third is by means of chemicals so you know there is a convention also convention on chemical weapons that these particular kinds of chemicals hazardous chemicals they should not be spread from one country to another one region to another in the name of spread of terrorism and if it is posing threat to the health of the people it should be discouraged and prohibited also so there is an organization for prohibition of the chemical weapons and under this convention this particular organization was formed and this is also another way or means of spreading the terrorism apart from this there can be biological weapons as well uh, just an example of coronavirus so students sometimes uh, we have seen in the news that there are some kind of allegations on china that many countries are stating like australia india was also part of it that proper inquiry should be done that whether how can this particular virus spread throughout the world and there are some kind of allegations on china that china deliberately does so so if Taking seeking this example, if some country now everyone is aware that such a virus, a simple single virus, can cause so much havoc in a country, economic and uh, uh, personal uh, civilians' loss can also be there. So, if a country recognizes this as a weapon and spread these biological agents uh, to the other countries, it is one of the form of the terrorist act as well. Then when we talk about, I will, I will teach you bioterrorism as a separate topic as well. Do not worry. A single question, because such problem is there, UPSC can ask you a single question on this particular topic. So I will be explaining it. Do not worry. We will take a separate topic on bioterrorism. Do not worry. But then another type of terrorism that is emerging today is cyber terrorism. Cyber security, cyber threat is a part of your syllabus. We will be discussing in detail. But what about cyber terrorism this particular act of cyber terrorism can be a problem because there is hacking there can be ransomwares can be there where uh, some kind of uh, uh, payment can be asked uh, in favor of uh, unlocking the particular uh, computer systems so whenever there is a use of internet or computers in spreading some kind of uh, illegal activity where if it is done in the in the name of uh, uh, doing it and hurting the sentiments of the some kind of people and uh, economy of a particular country then definitely it is a cyber attack cyber attack can also be cyber terrorism can also be explained in terms of spreading some kind of fake news fake uh, reports uh, uh, through social media and that is also using internet and this can be done in to radicalize in fact this can be used to radicalize people youth this can also be used to recruit recruit new members and even tomorrow it can be responsible for lone wolf attacks what are lone wolf attacks so this is under this particular heading of cyber terrorism i am telling you okay so uh, what are lone wolf attacks lone wolf attacks are such attacks such act of violence such act of terrorism where an individual is actually doing this kind of an act without the support of the proper organization behind so it is a well-planned act done by an individual and the person is so much radicalized the youth is so much radicalized that it performs such kind of an act i will be dealing taking this topic separately students uh, example is there in, in London such attacks happened in Christchurch New Zealand such attack happened okay then suicide terrorism definitely a person is so much polarized that in the name of religion and getting uh, external rewards maybe in future the person is very much in rage in taking revenge such kind of reasons can also be there person sacrifice his life and does the act of terrorism spreading 
uh, the uh, particular blast would happen and then the individual will be sacrificed as well and taking um, other civilians as well. So, these are the types or the basically the means of spread of terrorism under this topic. If a separate question comes up, my students are ready to answer this. Thank you.